Welcome back to Real Estate After Dark, where the facts come out at night. <laughs> Tonight's top stories are Wells Fargo Economist expects the Fed to cut rates dramatically in 2024. This is a very bold prediction. Story number two, the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation metric shows the slowest increase since 2020. Slow is a good thing in this scenario. And last but not least, the key to solving the housing crisis. You're definitely going to want to hear about this one. If this is the first time hearing the sound of my voice, my name is David. I have a background as a mortgage lender, underwriter, and realtor. I purchased multiple homes as well. But most importantly, I've helped hundreds of folks just like you buy homes in real life, not just the internet. But let's break down this week's news stories. Tonight's top story. Wells Fargo economists expect Fed to cut interest rates dramatically in 2024. And boy, do they mean dramatically. So currently, the federal funds rate or the benchmark rate, the cost for banks to borrow money is between 5 and 5.25%. Wells Fargo envisions a rate cut, multiple rate cuts next year, totaling 2.25%. So almost cutting that number in half. As a point of reference, prior to COVID, where the benchmark rate dropped down to 0.25%, so the Fed could save the economy due to COVID, it was at about two, between two and two and a half percent during that 2016 to 2019 timeframe. So that is a very dramatic cut, putting rates back to pre-COVID, essentially by 20. 24. Now, what is everybody else saying about this? Most folks are saying that they don't expect anything or they expect something around half a percent. So Wells Fargo is almost quadruple, whatever 5x this, they've almost 5x that number. Here's a quote from Wells Fargo. When you look at the Fed, they have quite an optimistic outlook for next year. They have growth slowing but generally remaining pretty strong and inflation coming back down. So they're very optimistic about what they think the Fed is seeing, even though the Fed has not announced the same optimism that Wells Fargo is seeing. So it's a prediction. I'm bringing you the news. Hopefully they're right. It doesn't look like they will be, but only time will tell. But based on all the information I am seeing, the next time when the Fed meets October 31st and November 1st, they most likely will not raise the cost of borrowing money. And I've seen most folks predict they'll lower the cost of borrowing money twice in 2024. That's why I see a lot of folks predicting a 0.5% decrease, not a 2.25% decrease. That would be wild. Our next story, piggybacking on that, the Fed's preferred inflation measure shows slowest monthly increase since 2020. Now, personal consumption expenditure, you may see PCE index grew 3.5% year over year in August, up from 3.4% the month prior and in line with expectations. Core PCE, which excludes the volatile food and energy categories, grew 3.9% down from month to month prior and in line with what economists surveyed by Bloomberg's had expected. Now let's break that down because it grew and went down. So what does that mean? Once again, inflation means something is going up. So a lot of times when folks say inflation numbers decreasing, they think, they think prices may be decreasing. No, it's just the pace at which prices are increasing has slowed, and that's what the Fed is monitoring. So deflation is when prices come down. And the reason they exclude food and gas, because like I said, those are the most volatile. Think about it. Like we get a lot of our gas from foreign nations. With the, whatever's going on in the Middle East, we got nothing. Well, and I guess it depends <laughs> what you say our, um, our foreign policy is, but they can just snap a finger and say, hey, the price of, of a barrel of oil is $10 more, $5 less, et cetera. Or there could be a war popping off over there or 
Putin could do something. So like gas and energy is very volatile and it's out of our control for the most part. But this decrease was the lowest number since November of 2020 before inflation started taking off due to the Federal Reserve lowering the benchmark rate from our previous store. Here is another quote from Moody Analytics Chief Economist Mark Zandi. It's about as good as you could expect. 0.1%, that's a real marvelous number. I'm sure I'm overstating the case. I don't think it pushes all the way back into the Fed's target 2% quite yet, but all the trend lines there look good. As a reminder, the Fed's mandate from Congress is to get inflation down to 2%. So we're at about 3.9% and hitting in the correct direction. So very optimistic. I don't think as optimistic as Wells Fargo is, but we shall see. The Federal Reserve revealed that it expects core PCE to fall quicker than initially expected this year. They see core inflation peaking at 3.7% this year, lower than June's projection of 3.9%, before cooling the 2.6% next year and 2.3% in 2025. So a year plus until we get close to the Fed or Congress's mandate to the Fed of 2% inflation. That is why most economists and people that read data believe that interest rates will still be in the fives or sixes throughout 2024, rolling into 2025. The last time inflation was under, or excuse me, pre-COVID inflation was at 1.7% in Q1 of 2020. It briefly became deflation during that same quarter as well before inflation took off due to the low, low cost to borrow money by the Fed. Our next news story, Biden's top economist says the key to ending the housing crisis is giving cities and developers monetary incentives to build more affordable homes. I personally filed this information under D for duh, but somehow there's a debate about whether this is accurate or not. Let's get into it. The U.S. is short anywhere between 1.5 million and 5.5 million homes. It depends how you're counting homes, whether it's doors, or rooms for people to stay, or the actual buildings, which is why there's such a big contrast between those two numbers. Either way you count them, the majority of the homes that were short are at the bottom of the housing market. Like I've told the story a couple of times about helping somebody here in the Dallas Metroplex find a home under $250,000. We had homes with six offers, nine offers, I think 14 and 34 offers on homes in that price bracket. There is a very lack of supply and still a very high demand for homes at the bottom of the market. High interest rates are scaring off both potential buyers and sellers, slowing rates of home building and high mortgage rates haven't brought down home prices as much as they were expected, creating an interesting headwind, Jared Bernstein, Biden's top economic advisor, has to say. Now, there's two ways that the Biden administration is looking to help solve this crisis. There's the demand side where we talk about subsidizing things like rent through Section 8 vouchers and so forth. But their major focus, which I think makes sense, is focusing on the supply side giving builders, developers an incentive to actually build those homes. This means that the government is more concerned about subsidizing and increasing the supply to address these shortages. In May, the Biden administration built the Housing Supply Action Plan. This includes efforts to incentivize denser developments and more affordable housing construction, incentivizing local governments to get rid of exclusionary zoning which often makes it illegal to build anything but single family homes. So yeah, you probably heard the term NIMBY, not in my backyard. I don't think anyone truly has an issue with affordable housing. They just have an issue with affordable housing too close to where they live. And that's the issue. You can have all the affordable housing plans laid out, but if there's nowhere to put the affordable housing, like what? have you actually done? You can't really put them 
in the city. The city's already dense. And we talk about moving them out to the suburbs. The folks in the suburbs are like, oh, well, I got away from the city because I didn't want apartment buildings and poor people around me, essentially. Another quote from Bernstein. If you can get extra points in your bid to build a transportation hub under the bipartisan infrastructure law, because you're putting affordable housing in that area as well. This seems to us like a pretty good deal, and that's exactly what we're doing. So like, okay, you need some money to build roads and highways. Well, okay, well, if you put some affordable places to live at the end of the road or the yellow brick road, the pot of gold, or along that way, that's a win-win for everybody. You get a new road, and folks get affordable housing, but not in the middle of nowhere. They have access to transportation and ways to get to point A to point B. Helping developers expand costs by expanding tax credits is another thing they're working on. Low income housing tax credit subsidizes purchasing, building, and renovating affordable housing. And it's broadly popular among a variety of interests. Because yes, builders just like you and me, either you're, whether you're self-employed or you own a business, you're in the business of making money. You most likely want to help folks, but your number one loyalty is to yourself and your family. Like, think about whether you're hourly or not. You want to get paid the most for your time. So if you can make $40 doing the exact same thing as you could making $30 an hour, like, which opportunity would you take, right? It'd be weird to your family or, you know, go home to the wife and kids. Like, okay, hey, I got got a, got a, some news for you guys. I took a voluntary pay cut uh, today. So I need to make $40 an hour, but now I'm going to make $30 an hour because I think it's the right thing to do. Like, realistically, would you do that? You probably wouldn't. Low-income housing people like it. Bankers like it because they buy the credits and use them against their tax liability. And builders like it, he said, so it's a very nice thing there. That is this week's news stories. Let me know your feedback down below in the comments. Send me an email. If you want me to cover a particular news story, email it to me at hello at houserichshow.com. But as always, buy land. Rumor has it, they're not making any more of it. Facts come out at night. <laughs>